Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another English-only lesson here at Study English with Us. Today, we're going to start a new series here. I know I'm starting a lot of series. We will follow through with them. But I wanted to get started on a, a series that I call Let's Talk About. And uh, as we talk about various subjects, it'll be kind of like a vocabulary lesson crossed with a listening type of lesson where we'll learn some new words together and also talk about them. And uh, today's topic is all about sports. Let's talk about sports. Since I'm holding the controller and uh, have developed the lesson here, I think that uh, I'm going to start with probably my favorite uh, sport, and that's probably because I grew up here in Canada, and that is hockey. And uh, hockey actually might be um, a new concept to some of our students, but it is a game that is played on ice, and uh, you put on some skates, you skate around the rink, and uh, you shoot this uh, discs-shaped puck, we call it, and you try and get it in the net. And uh, it's called hockey. Hockey. It's a rather rough sport, actually. Um, you can see that the gentlemen here have a lot of protective gear on, especially for their head. It's because um, part of playing hockey is to come up against a player and just give them a big check and throw them into the, the boards. Let's see if we got a shot here. Yeah, these... The whole rink is surrounded by these boards, and part of the game is to to come up and give your your opponent just a big shove into the boards, and you can end up uh, landing on your head on the ice, and without those helmets on, you could uh, really do a lot of damage. But it's a lot of fun. It's a fast sport, and uh, people in Canada really enjoy their hockey. In fact, almost every young boy in Canada learns how to play hockey. He joins a, a little league and uh, uh, even has competing games against other leagues of youngsters around town. And uh, so it's really big in our culture here in Canada, the game of hockey. Now, this next sport can be a little bit confusing to some of our worldwide uh, students because football to many people is uh, something different than what we call football here in Canada and the United States. Here in uh, the United States, if you can see this photograph of the, of the man holding the ball there, the ball looks quite a bit different than the football that most people are familiar with uh, around the world. Let's take a closer look at it here. You can see it's kind of an oblong shape. And uh, to, to make it clear what game you're talking about, some people call this American football. But it is a very uh, popular sport here, uh, especially in the United States. Again, it's, it's quite a rough game. You can see the types of helmets that these guys are using here. People today in sports medicine are even questioning whether it is uh, safe these days to play football the way we've been playing it uh, because there's so many people that uh, get such severe head injuries from playing this game that um, by the time they're only 30 or 35 years old, they're really losing um, a lot of their mental abilities because of so many head injuries. So... That's uh, an interesting point about American football. Now, because we call this sport football, we have to call the other type of football something different. And maybe you've heard of this term as well, uh, but it, we call it soccer. Soccer. That's what everybody else in the world calls football. Well, we call it soccer. As you probably know, is the the most popular game in the world. Statistically, there's more soccer played and uh, more fans than any other game in the world. Soccer. 
Another really popular sport here in Canada and the United States is called baseball. In fact, I think this is the one that people call the all-American sport. The all-American sport. Baseball. Although other countries have picked it up, I know that there's uh, a lot of baseball played in the Caribbean. Um, I hear of baseball in Japan. And so maybe in your country as well, there's uh, also baseball. But uh, it uh, is played with a, uh, a very small ball. We can see in this photograph here. And uh, it's hit by a bat. And after you hit the ball, you uh, run to a base on the field. And if you get there before your opponents throw the ball to first base, then you're safe and uh, you can continue uh, running around the rest of the bases. And if you make it all the way home, then you've scored a goal. Baseball. Another very popular game here in Canada and the United States is called basketball. In fact, I believe that basketball, if I've got this right, basketball was invented by a Canadian. And it is a really popular sport. In fact, the town where we live close to, I shouldn't call it a town, the city that we live close to, Toronto in Canada, uh, last year took the world championships. Uh, our Toronto Raptors took the, uh, the championship. I might have just given myself away there. I'm not a big sports fan. I think I probably just called it the wrong thing. The world champions, probably not correct. But uh, for the North American leagues, Canada and the United States, they took home, the, they won the finals. Basketball. Of course, with the coronavirus, all of these games have been canceled. And uh, sports fans today, I'm not sure what they're doing. They may be watching old games <laughs> that they're uh, playing over again. I don't know, just to have something to watch. But basketball is very exciting. I kind of like basketball because it is a no-contact sport. Um, we talked about how hockey and football are very uh, rough sports. They are very um, can cause a lot of injuries to the players. Well, uh, basketball, because you're not supposed to touch your opponent, you don't see as many serious injuries. The types of injuries that you might find on the basketball court are more of sprained ankles. <laughs> and that's a, a lot better than brain injuries, brain damage from playing the sport. Volleyball. Now here's a, a sport that I think that is quite popular around the world. I know I have a lot of friends in Europe that uh, really enjoy playing volleyball. I see people playing in Africa even in Southeast Asia, I see people playing volleyball. Now, a nice variant on volleyball is what's called beach volleyball. And uh, it's basically the same game, except that you're outside in the fresh air. The types of clothing is usually a bathing suit and usually no shoes. You're just in your bare feet and uh, playing on the sand. And uh, it's a very enjoyable version of volleyball, beach volleyball. Skating. Now, some of these I've included as a sport because they um, end up being a, an Olympic Games um, category. Otherwise, skating can just be recreational. You know, if you want to get out and get some fresh air uh, here in Canada in the wintertime, you can find a, a, a lake that's frozen over and uh, just skate on the lake uh, or go to an ice arena and uh, just for, for uh, exercise and recreation, um, skate on the ice. But uh, in addition to that, as people really become good at skating, they can join teams and do racing on their skates. And that becomes uh, an Olympic event. 
Sadly, it seems as though the Olympics are going to have to be canceled this year. Um, I know I always look forward to the Olympics year uh, so that uh, we can see some of these sports on TV. And uh, it was scheduled for this summer in Japan, but because of the coronavirus, it looks like it's going to be postponed a year. And uh, so we're going to have to wait another whole year to see some of these events at the Olympics. Now, a version of skating is called roller skating. When you don't have ice, you can put on these special shoes that have uh, wheels on them and skate around kind of like you're ice skating, but it's different. Same, same, but different. And, uh, and yet it's something that you can do out uh, in the warm weather. Um, find a place that has a smooth ground. Uh, often there are parks that uh, you can go to to roller skate. There are also rinks and arenas that are designed for uh, roller skating. And that's available in the summer times, even in Canada. We don't usually keep our ice arenas, or most of them are not kept uh, through the summertime because it just costs so much to keep the building cold enough to have ice all year, all summer long. And uh, so sometimes some of these places will turn their rink into a roller rink. And so people can go roller skating there. Now, if you want to go a little faster, take a look at the uh, wheels on these shoes are just four wheels all in the same row, all in a straight row. And this is called roller blading, roller blading. It is popular for people who want to go a little bit faster than what you can with roller skates, roller blading. This actually gives you a good workout when you uh, put these on and uh, go five or six kilometers. But whether or not this is a sport, that's a question. Um, it's probably more a recreational activity. Swimming. Again, maybe just recreational, but because it is something that uh, is included in the Olympic Games, we included it here because a lot of people become very good at swimming and different types of strokes, and uh, so they will take it up as a racing thing and uh, compete against other swimmers, and the best ones go to the Olympics. Swimming, and that would be a sport. Skiing. In addition to the Summer Olympics, there's also the Winter Olympics. And uh, this is one of the events at the Winter Olympics. And here in Canada, we've hosted the Winter Olympics a couple of times. And it's always enjoyable to send our athletes uh, to the Winter Games so that they can compete on the slopes. But uh, more than just a sport... It's also a very good recreational activity. If you ever get the opportunity to come and visit us here in Canada, uh, it would be a, a good thing to put on your itinerary to go to Western Canada, uh, the province of Alberta, and go to the Banff area. And I recommend Lake Louise and also Sunshine Village as two of our best uh, places to go skiing. Vancouver area also has uh, what's called Whistler, just north of Vancouver. It's also a very beautiful and uh, wonderful place to ski. Skiing. These days, a lot of young people especially have taken up what's called snowboarding. And you'll notice the difference between skiing and boarding is that this guy, it's only one ski, but it's a much wider ski than what you would use uh, when you're skiing. And so they call it more of a board than a ski. They strap themselves onto this board and go down steep slopes and make huge jumps and land Sometimes they twist several times before they land. It's just amazing what these guys do on their snowboards. Snowboarding. Now, if you live in a nice tropical area, surfing is a wonderful sport. And uh, people enjoy going to the warm tropical areas where there's big waves 
and take out their board and go surfing. A couple of months ago, we were in Vietnam, and uh, I noticed uh, people attempting to do some surfing there. The waves were getting big enough to do it there. I guess this is a sport. (laughs) I don't really consider it to be uh, a sport like hockey or football or soccer or basketball. But a lot of people seem to really like boxing. And they call it a sport, so I've included it here. Boxing, where two people get in a ring and beat each other up. I'm not sure why people like to do that or why they like to go see it it's is beyond my comprehension golf now here's a sport that i enjoy again there's no contact (laughs) you don't (laughs) run into each other as opponents you're just hitting that ball down the fairway and trying to get it in a hole on the green and uh, it's a very relaxing sport and um a good way to get fresh air and exercise, especially if you walk the course instead of drive one of those golf carts. So I don't do it very often, but I really enjoy it uh, when I do. I probably get out a couple times a year. Golf. Badminton. Badminton. I know this is really big in uh, Southeast Asia as well, and uh, my wife likes to play this. I used to play it quite a bit when I was going to college. In fact, I think I took a class in racket sports, and badminton was one of the uh, sports that we uh, studied in that class. Badminton also gives you an excellent workout. It doesn't look like it here. You know, it's just a little bird, and the racket's really light. But what gives you a good workout in badminton is running around the court, trying to make it when the bird is landing right up at the net, you have to dash up to the net and then your opponent sends it way back to the back and you're running down to the back to pick it up there. And uh, within just a matter of 15 minutes, you've put in a lot of exercise. Another wonderful racket sport is tennis. I haven't played a lot of tennis, but uh, I remember enjoying that a lot uh, when I did. Gymnastics. I have two older daughters besides Joshua and An-An. When they were young, they took gymnastics. And so I went to a lot of uh, practices with them and competitions with them as they competed against other gymnasts. And uh, one of the events that they did was this balance beam. And I remember my daughters uh, doing this, balancing on this beam and doing flips on the beam. Uh, It's just incredible uh, what uh, the body is able to do with a lot of practice. Gymnastics. Cycling. Now, this could also be considered uh, a recreational activity, but uh, some people take it up very seriously and uh, do uh, meets and uh, races. And it also becomes a an Olympic event, and so we threw it in here as a a sport as well. And the same goes for running. Uh, Running can just be a way to get exercise, but uh, as you enter it seriously in uh, some track and field events, there's different types of events in track and field. This one here is sprinting, but uh, there's many other versions of running around the track. Some you're jumping over hurdles and and, uh, so running uh, or sprinting. Uh, The sprinting refers to a very short race, maybe a hundred yard dash. Sprinting, running is all uh, considered a sport as well. All right. Well, I believe that does it for this lesson on Let's Talk About Sports. In our next lesson, we're going to kind of continue the sports theme and we're going to talk about the different terms that are used in the world of sports. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you on our next uh, lesson on Let's Talk About. Let's Talk About.